Next on the Broadway show, The Acid Test. One of the stars, the trippy new musical Flying Over Sunset, tells us how she got ready to play a diplomat on acid. Plus, say hello to one of the fresh faces of Mrs. Doubtfire, the musical. You'll get to know Annalise Scarpacci. And Casey Levy is here. We're talking about her amazing Broadway career in Carolina Change, Frozen, and so many other amazing shows. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. Heading into winter, Broadway is back, and it is hot as ever. That's why we're always excited to bring you another awesome episode of The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Flying Over Sunset just touched down on Broadway, and it is a trip of a lifetime. Flying Over Sunset is a work of fiction, but it's inspired by a trio of incredible historical figures, all coming together at a crossroads in their lives, and all dropping acid. Paul's here now with a story. Thanks, Tamsin. Carmen Cusack is starring as socialite Claire Booth Luce in the trip of a new musical, Flying Over Sunset. We sat down here at Lincoln Center Theater to chat all about it. You are playing Claire Booth Luce. Mm -hmm. All I know about this woman yep. is the play, The Women. And basically, right. it's, it was like the sex in the city of its day. That's what I know about her. It was a big yeah. Broadway hit. You know a lot more about her than I do. I, I hope so. I mean, I, I didn't know anything about her until I did this project. And I thought, why didn't I know about this woman? Why don't we all know more about right. this woman? Because she really was like that woman, a proper trailblazer. She did everything. She was a journalist. She was a playwright. She was um, an ambassador for Italy. She was an ambassador for Brazil, I think, for three days. And then she wow. said, I don't want to do this anymore. But she just did everything. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in the 1950s, when most women were at home cooking and, you know, nose in their Betty Crocker book or whatever, um, she was out just, you know, trailblazing it for all of us. My favorite thing about uh, playing her is, is her wit. And, and her just freedom to just say whatever she was thinking, and yeah. her, the strength that she had at that time, at that day and age, you know, women were so, you know, very careful about what they said, but she, but she wasn't careful, but at the same time, she was incredibly smart. Mm -hmm. And people were attracted to her from all walks of life, all ages were, and she was an attractive woman, and she, but she was just fearless, fearless lady. Lying over sunset, Crossing Hollywood and Vine, flying over sunset. She did everything, including LSD. Including, and, here and we are. she had some very hard life lessons. She lost her mother, and then six years later, she lost her 19-year-old daughter. I think she was trying to find her way past the grief, or maybe trying to find it and then just move on, or just think she really wanted to search her soul, and she felt that acid was gonna help her do that. So Flying Over Sunset is a brand new musical. I'm assuming there's something probably very theatrical about LSD trips and what about this story and this combination of stories lends itself to this form? Well, I love the fact that this is not sticking to a musical formula yeah. in a sense. It's taking you on a trip. And uh, the only time we really ever sing is, in, is once we've taken Acid. They always say that characters in musicals should sing when the emotions are so much that they can't speak anymore. But right. for this one, it's like when they're high enough. When they're high that's, enough that's to what... really express themselves in a different way. Um, because they were all a bit tight, tightly wound. Yeah. And so they needed to, to take a drug to finally go, whoa, now I can sing. This is a title that people don't, they walk in, people don't know what Flying Over Sunset is, which is always really attractive to me as a theater goer. But a lot of people might be like, what the heck is this? What do you tell people? Well, this really came to me, I think, when we finally got, went through the whole show and did a run of it. By the end of it, I just thought, oh my God, it just felt like a warm embrace. And it just, it was just a reminder that we're, we're all in this together and you were gonna be, it's just, you're okay because we're all connected. Everything, everything, we're all connected. And no matter what we're going through, it's okay. Folks, we love Broadway. We love New York, we love the arts, and all three are back. Thank you, everybody. It is now officially official. Broadway is totally back. After 21 months, the Tony Award-winning musical Dear Evan Hansen is the final show to reopen its doors. The musical returning just in time to mark its five-year anniversary on Broadway. Jordan Fisher, who plays Evan, marked the comeback with a special curtain call and post-show party. <laughs> Chimes in comes 
Company. We're also celebrating the opening night of the revival of Stephen Sondheim's Company. The musical stars Tony Award winners Patti LaPone and Katrina Lenk. Company first premiered on Broadway 51 years ago. It takes place now in Manhattan, and there's just constant references to the city and how we love it, and how you know it can be challenging also to keep relationships and be in contact with people when there are so many people around you all the time. You can still feel kind of lonely, and so it like just hits all those things that are so New York. It's one of Broadway's most hilarious new shows, and it's strictly for the poppets. It's Mrs. Doubtfire, of course. It stars Tony nominee Rob McClure in the title role, and it also features some amazing young performers, including Annalise Scarpacci. She is this week's Fresh Face. I'm Annalise Scarpacci. I play Lydia Hillard and Mrs. Doubtfire on Broadway. My parents are very musical. They love music. Their wedding song was actually All I Ask of You from Phantom of the Opera. So I guess you could say that musicals were already in my blood. Doing theater in New York and on Broadway was always my dream. I actually found something uh, that I wrote in the second grade and it says, what do you want to do when you grow up? And my answer was, I want to be a lead in a Broadway show. My very first Broadway audition was for Billy Elliot, which um, is my favorite musical ever. I was very stressed out and I had a panic attack in front of the entire creative team and I ran out of the room. At the time, we didn't realize that I had been experiencing early symptoms of Crohn's disease. I think it's important for people to know that people with invisible illnesses like mine are able to do things that normal people can do. A couple of nights ago, I had my treatment in the morning, and then I went to rehearsal, and then I did the show at night. And I can't even describe to you how I was feeling. I was just, I felt like I wanted to crawl into my bed and cry. And I did the whole show and I went through and I stuck with it and I was very proud of myself that I did because I wasn't going to let this little beast inside of me ruin anything. <laughs> my 16th birthday, I wanted it to be so much fun and my birthday is around Halloween. I am a true, true Scorpio. So in true Scorpio fashion, I had a wicked themed Sweet 16. I consider myself more of a, of a Glinda, but with like my moon is an Elphaba. <laughs> when I found out that I got Lydia Hillard, my manager called me. I see my mom in the corner. My mom had no idea what was happening. And when my agent said, you got Doubtfire, I thought he was lying. And I just broke down in tears because he was dead serious. <laughs> and I just crashed down onto the floor. There's a video on it, of it um, on my Instagram. in hysterics and it was just like this whole release of energy that all of my hard work paid off. What is it? Oh, no. What is it? I have a feeling you already know. Oh, what is it? I don't. I, don't. I, don't. Ah! I get to play this character who is so sure of herself and so sure that she needs to make sure that her siblings are okay and that her family is surviving and she just wants her dad to tell the truth. But besides all the funny, it has all of this heart and it's all of this soul and it has an incredible, incredible message. And my character, Lydia, her whole story revolves around the relationship between herself and her father. So it's really great that I get to have this moment and I bring in my relationship with my own dad into the show too. And for me, my family is my whole world. And to be a part of a show that is about family and that is about love, and that is about acceptance. It's just a great gift, and I'm so honored to be a part of it. MJ, the new Michael Jackson bio musical, is now in previews at Broadway's Neil Simon Theater. It stars newcomer Miles Frost in the title role. This is his Broadway debut. MJ officially opens February 1st. There's still a whole lot more to talk about on this edition of The Broadway Show. Coming up, history has its eyes on Broadway. We're talking to Hamilton's Crystal Joy Brown. She plays Eliza. This is The Broadway Show, and we're back in just a few.
Welcome back to The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Let's get back to it. We just can't let it go. Broadway's original Elsa from Frozen and so many amazing shows. Casey Levy is here. Let's go ahead and check back in with Paul Wontorek. She believes in love and constantly shaking up the resume. Let's walk through the stage resume of Casey Levy with Casey Levy. Hey. How you doing? I'm great. How I'm are so you? happy to see you. Happy to see you too. This is the St. James Theater. You were the girl mm -hmm. who sang Let It Go Every Night and lived to tell about it. That's right. You were Elsa mm -hmm. in Frozen. You literally got into like full princess mode. Yes. I don't think you're naturally that girl. No, no, I'm not that girl really. I, I love a little hair and makeup moment, but I was not expecting to be like the Elsa with the crystals and you know, all of the things. Um, and it was amazing. It was the most special thing ever. Plus, it's the first show I did as a mom. Yeah. He's only ever known me as Elsa and like he just thought this is what all, everybody does on Broadway is they wear like a gorgeous gown, get it ripped off of them every night, belt really high and have people stand up for them. So the Al Hirschfeld Theater, you did hair here. You were Sheila. Yes, I she was. She believed in love. That really was kind of the first big thing that made people take notice of you on Broadway. Don't you think? Yeah, that was my first time originating a role, even yeah. though it was a revival. And it changed my life personally and professionally. And kind of beautiful hippie spirit. Yeah. Right? And you all really sort of jumped into that. Yeah, I feel like, you know, we were doing a lot of social action work yeah. off stage that felt like we were supporting what we were saying on stage and it didn't feel convenient. It felt really heartfelt. And we also had a lot of fun. The Imperial Theater, look down, look up, look up. <sighs> you were in Les Miserables. Yes. Fontaine. Epic, epic role. Oh my God. You did it for a long time too. Uh, yeah, a year and change. Yeah, um, that's a lot of dying. It is a lot of dying. Spoiler. And then a lot of barricading in act two. You don't just get to do the star yeah. turn. Yeah, yeah. They're like, no, no, you don't get to sit backstage and do a crossword. You have to go on stage and peel plastic potatoes. So I got into some trouble in that barricade. I had some fun. I was a little bit famous for hiding in the barricade. Our, our revival was um, very dimly lit. Yes. And so I would get into parts of the barricade and scare the hell out of some of the cast members quietly um, during scenes because that's what being on Broadway is all about. Edit! Edit! Um, no, this was amazing because Lamas is the show that made me want to be an actor. Casey, this is the Lundfontaine Theater named after two very famous actors. Yes. You were in Ghost the Musical and I have to fanboy out a little bit. You know I love Ghost the Musical. I do. I love that about you. Did you have a lot of like New Jersey moms crying at the stage door? Yeah. In addition to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you and New Jersey moms. Yeah, yeah. It's it's that movie, you know. It just oh, and so I good. mean I threw pottery. I learned how to do that. <laughs> it was the whole thing. You still do pottery? No, I have not done it since the closing night at the Lunt <laughs> Casey, this is Wicked. Yes. Hey, you, Wicked. You played Alphaba. Mm-hmm. Here on Broadway a little bit? I understudied it on Broadway. Did you go on? I went on. Okay. I think like five or seven times, something like that. Okay, okay. Um, and then you did it in, out In LA. Else. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. did You did an LA run yes. as Alphaba. Yes. I wish I saw you as Alphaba. How was your Alphaba? Was it fun? I think it was fun. <laughs> um, I was really young and really green. <laughs> um, and it was amazing and scary. And on the days that you felt good, you felt invincible in that role. Like it's so, there's, very few roles like Elfa, uh -huh. you know, and I still think about those good nights and think, wow, I would love to do that again. The Neil Simon Theater, you actually made your Broadway debut here. We finally arrived where it all started. Yes. That stage door, you walked in there and... I did. Look at you now. Yeah, it's pretty wild. What, do you, what was that girl like? Oh my gosh. That girl was overwhelmed, excited, grateful, um, and like living in Dorkland as Penny Pingleton, just like living my best dork dreams, you know? Casey, we have arrived at Studio 54. Did you bring your dancing shoes? Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't dance in this show. <laughs> you don't dance in this show. No, but we do love the history of the building, for sure. Yes, yeah. Caroline or change. What's yeah. it been like for you to sort of, you were working on the show before the pandemic, before the shutdown, yeah. you're revisiting it. What, what's it been like sort of getting back on the stage? It's been, um, amazingly rewarding and a little bit scary and um, really gratifying. Uh, it's a dense show and it's a show that intimidates the audience sometimes and the actors sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of us first time around were nervous to tackle the material. And then of course the events of 2020 and everything we've been through collectively as a country and the world, um, the show is now resonating deeper um, and differently. I feel really lucky to play such a great role coming off of Elsa and then transitioning to Rose, yes. two wildly different 
parts, yes. and um, it's really exciting to show off a little comedy again, which I haven't yep. done since Hairspray, um, and, and still get some drama and get some, some real heavy stuff to play. Absolutely. I mean, Rose is, uh, she's living in the South. She's sort of been brought there um, by her husband, and she's dealing with, Caroline is the housekeeper, and the relationships are just so tense. Everything's very loaded, yeah. yeah. Her stepson is not interested in having a relationship with right. her, and Rose just tries too hard and says the wrong thing a lot of the time. And she has good intentions, but you know, as we've learned again this year, good intentions aren't enough. So she goes on a really cool, intense journey in the show. I love seeing all the things you can do. I think it's just Thanks. so much fun to watch. Every time you're back in a new show, you show a different uh, side of yourself. What's it been like for you to sort of relive all this in, the, in this little walk we just took, walk through your career? It's kind of crazy. <laughs> I feel, I almost feel like different parts of myself have been left sure. in each of those blocks, you know. Um, I feel like it's it's cool to be able to pause amidst a really awesome experience and also look back and celebrate what came before and I look forward to, you know, hopefully playing many more of the theaters in this neighborhood uh, in future years. This is the Broadway show and we're back in just a few. I'm past patiently waiting, I'm passionately smashing every expectation, every action's an act of creation. I'm laughing in the face of casualties and sorrow. For the first time I'm thinking past tomorrow. Hamilton helped get a lot of us through the darkest days of the pandemic with its release on Disney Plus, but there's nothing like seeing the Tony award-winning musical in person. Charlie Cooper caught up with Broadway's Eliza Hamilton, Crystal Joy Brown. Just months before COVID-19 shut down Broadway, Crystal Joy Brown stepped into the role of Eliza in Hamilton. This September, show returned to the revolutionary show, and I got a chance to chat with her. So Crystal, first and foremost, talk to me about playing mm -hmm. Eliza and like how excited you are to get back on that stage. Well, I really fell in love with Eliza being able to play her because she was just everything that I think that uh, us women are, strong, vulnerable, um, the caretakers, but also leading her own legacy. Um, and to play her is a true honor because I get to see the audience at the end of the show and people have been through so much and she is the one that people can connect to their, with their hearts. So I'm excited to connect with people in any way that I possibly can, but then to play such a woman of a strong legacy who knew how to love, that means so much to me. What do you miss most about being a part of Hamilton? Obviously this is a show that I imagine every night you guys end it with a round of applause, standing ovation. Do you miss that or what do you miss most about being on stage? I mean, my, my cast, you know, our community. I miss our Broadway community. Um, I miss even just walking up here and seeing this incredible marquee and being so proud. Talk to us about like being able to see the marquee and being like literally here. <laughs> I mean, it's a, there's a date. There is a date on the marquee. I remember when it was just nothing. And then I remember when it was coming soon or 2021. And now it is actually September 14th, which feels very real. This is the moment that makes it feel real to me because I haven't been in the theater in a year. I, I can't wait to get in there and just smell the theater again, stand on that stage, figure out how to walk on a turntable again. Um, but yeah, it's a very special moment. I miss like, I miss our audiences and our collective collaborative spirit together as we walk in. Um, but mostly, I miss that big roar when you hear Alexander Hamilton and it's like, raw, like it's like a rock concert. Yeah. So that adrenaline and that love and connectivity is something that I miss and I'm excited to, to be back in the rooms where it happens back on Broadway. Of course, everybody's excited with their shows coming back, but talk about the importance of Hamilton in particular coming back after such a heavy year for so many people. Talk to me about the importance of such a powerful show coming back on stage. Well, what I think Hamilton has done has always shown representation and what this country actually looks like. You see every single representation of every shade, every color, body size, we have all of it in this company and we are always looking to be inclusive and, and spread the narrative of what the arts can be and who we have is everyone and everyone seeing themselves. So it's a big deal how we're coming and restructuring Broadway and what we're bringing. And I think a lot of shows are getting excited about how we plan to return and are taking notes and we can continue to spread this representation across the land. And that's gonna do it for us. Until next time, I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.